Welcome back to Danger Clothes Customs. Today we're going to take a look at a couple of different go bags and bug out guns, weapons that you can have easily concealed in your vehicle or ready at the front door, loaded up uh, for shit hits the fan or any sort of emergency situation where you need to grab a weapon. Here's a quick clip from the movie Red Dawn. This is one of the earlier examples and probably the most realistic example of shit hitting the fan and reason for us to always be armed and ready to go to battle at a moment's notice. I like the scene where they head to the store and load up the truck full of supplies to head to the mountains. That's a very realistic thing to do during this type of crisis. In this next clip, uh, this is from World War Z and the zombie breakout. Um, this is another scenario, while may not be as realistic, the panic and need to get medication and food is very realistic and another reason why you should be armed as this scene shows when he's confronted by someone with a gun but anybody who went shopping the first day of the pandemic when they shut the schools down this is what the supermarket looked like well, i like to joke and say that the zombie apocalypse isn't realistic uh, we've learned differently uh, from the last couple of years under the pandemic, whether it's an actual virus or just the ridiculousness of society breaking down and government control. All of these things can equal shit hits the fan. And here in the next movie, Battle Los Angeles, this is the alien invasion and yet another possible shit hits the fan scenario where we'll need to be armed and ready. All right, my first bug out bag, we're gonna take a look at the DRD Tactical Aptus Rifle. This comes in what's called a cherry bomb bag. Uh, it's a full backpack rig. Uh, very sturdy and uh, overdeveloped here. Lots of hidden pockets, uh, meant to be both a uh, out in public bag and a hidden rifle bag. So I'll show you what's inside here. The, uh, the first pouch, a couple of outer pouches have storage for documents, uh, small gear, pockets, standard backpack stuff. And in the back, we've got a mag holder, two mag holders, and then a storage compartment for the rifle itself. That. So you velcro straps, pull out your barrel, pull out your handguard, pull out your seizure, and this rifle is meant to be put together in less than 60 seconds. I lock the bolt back. At least on the spring pressure on the barrel. There's a, a hole for the gas tube. Set that gas tube in there. There's a little rivet here. Stick that in the groove nice and tight. And then it's just a matter of how fast can you screw this down, like so. And then you just drop your handguard on. Slides over. pin here. So you pull this pin, let you seat it down, push the pin in, and lock the receiver with this receiver uh, lever, hand, hand lever. And then the gun is ready to use. You've got an ambidextrous bolt release, just like on a regular AR. We've got ourselves a compact but full length rifle. It's an A5 style stock, uh, maybe ACR stock. Pulls open, can change the length of pull. Also has a cheek riser that can be raised. On this side, there's a 
left-handed charging handle, just like a L1A1 foul with a fold down charging handle piece, caulking piece. This is non-reciprocating. As you can see on this side, that is a fully chromed bolt. Standard AR grip. Uh, this one is the rubberized uh, mag pole and standard AR um, safety selector switch. Has a built in sling point mount here. And I will add one to the front of the rifle. Uh, it doesn't come with optics. I added some optics, backup sights, and a reflex sight. I also added this. It came with a standard bird cage. I added this uh, muzzle brake. So overall, it's pretty light, uh, being all M-locked here, kind of aluminum, lightweight rail. When you're done, take downs pretty much the same. Mag, pull down this lever, like that. Pop this pin, I push it on the side. Push this pin out, and you're going to remove your handguard. Take the barrel off, you just unscrew this. Start it down there very well to hold it in place. Plus it has that additional nipple there that goes into a groove. Keep your barrel straight, your gas tube straight. Cap that you can add here. Throw this on so that it protects the end of your gas tube. Threads on there, keeps that get all straight and debris free. So if you'd like to have a small bag for your rifle, ready to do some work, show up on the scene. Just get the bag right opened up. Pull out my hands on it, pull out my barrel. Take the nut off. Pull up the rifle. Charge it back. Just like that. Screw it down. Snug. Turn this out. Pop that pin. Pin in, flip that down, ready to rock. Next up for my bug out bags, I got this backpack here. Standard size backpack. This go bag. I've got my weapon also in two pieces. It's another nice feature on an AR pistol is you can get it into a bag. You take it into two pieces. And it quickly snaps together, I'd say about the same or faster than that uh, D or D tactical Aptis. However, again, this is a lot uh, shorter. This being an AR pistol, it is able to fit in a backpack uh, with the upper and lower receiver separated. But if it was a rifle, 
um, this receiver section adds, you know, another 10 inches. Uh, and so it wouldn't fit in your back. But as you can see, quickly deploy this out of your bag, snap the upper and the lower together, and you're ready to go. This has a Maxim arm brace. Also in this bug out bag, got my plate carrier set up. Now this is a one of, one of many plate carriers I have set up and this one is just sort of a quick get into a battle, get into a fight situation. On the rear, I've got a Kind of a pouch backpack pouch section i've got a 40 round mag pole mag that i can slip out the back easily uh, just reach around the back and pull it out In the top section i've got a med kit uh, this is more of a med kit for someone else to use tourniquet and uh, gauze and all the standard med pack Also got a pair of uh, super zip ties. These are the big um, half inch size zip ties. You can use them for different things. Uh, very handy to have out in the field. And on the other side, oh, is the other 40 round P mag. So you get those mags set up one on each side. Switch around to the front. I've got uh, one extra 30 round mag in the front here. Um, and I have two here. I added uh, some draw out to help me pull these out, pull outs. Handles. Got my handy dandy knife. So this is a kind of basic. Um, armored plate carrier. Sometimes I usually have a, a tourniquet um, in the front somewhere, a dump pouch, uh, mag extra magazines for pistols, things like that. And on this one, uh, specific to this package, I'm gonna be, you know, probably have my, my daily concealed carry on me, but I didn't stack another pistol in here. I will eventually, uh, but for now, this one's um, intended to use with this AR, so I maxed out with one, two, three, four, five AR mags. And this is a Kevlar um, plate, so it's um, about half as heavy as a standard AR500 plate. I do like the Kevlar, it's a lot lighter. And I forgot to show also, I put a a one point sling in here for my air pistol. Kind of confused what happened there, but just uh, got to memorize what I was doing. Good example for you guys to uh, test out your equipment from time to time, familiarize yourself. Put that locked in and here we are. Load it up and ready to rock. Another good backpack or kind of concealed uh, go bag type gun. I just got a regular backpack here. It's just a deep square backpack. Unassuming, it doesn't draw a lot of attention. If someone happens to see this sitting in the back of your 
back of your car. Let's pull this out of my backpack. It's a Sub 2000 by Keltec, 9mm. Takes Glock magazines. A very compact for a full length rifle, 16 inch barrel. Um, so this one, you pull it out and you're ready to go. Magazine already loaded in there for the basic 17 rounder. And I strapped a couple of 30 round Glock mags on here. Get ready to work. If I need to deploy that, just pull one out, drop my mag, put a new one in, charge it, and ready to go. So these two are strapped on the side just with some Velcro there. And on the bottom one, I'll show you, it's actually uh, a Picatinny rail uh, piece that I just uh, glued onto the, the mag. And so this piece, holds this on the bottom rail. And so you can just pull it off, pop it off, and also easily just to put back on. So if I took this one off, if you didn't like all that bulky stuff on there, um, you still run it with just one mag underneath. Makes for a good grip as well. Doesn't get in the way. Uh, this is a very skinny uh, hand, hand guard here. So you can either hold it like this or just have it not in the way and when you need it you just pull it off put it in give it a good slap and it's in there so you can see that picatinny reel uh grip ends right there so it doesn't impede with the magazine All right, sub 2K or sub 2000, nine millimeter Glock by Keltec. Um, it's a very accurate and smooth soft shooting rifle. Out of all the nine millimeter carbines that I used, when I took this one out the first time to shoot it, I was just amazed at how accurate it was and just very little movement is happening. Uh, I think with this main action on a spring through this tube here, um, for whatever reason is is just very pleasant to shoot so very light polymer um i got a fully loaded mag here and fully loaded mag here and it's still super lightweight flip pull it in half it locks locking mechanism here the sight locks into the back so it's good to go you can carry it around with you like this Fold it even. Um, it's not going to come loose. To open it, you have to pull up both sides of this uh, release nut switch. Pull that up, and it releases the barrel. Pull it down and charge your action, and you are ready to shoot. Put in a empty magazine check the action this is an extended macarbo charging handle on here um, i don't think the original one was that bad uh, but i got an empty glock magazine in there just like that next up i've got a serious bug out bag go bag situation got an axe attached to it it's ready to go so if you need to take off and grab some gear uh, this one would be a good choice with everything's already in it and a lot more room to store other stuff as you uh, get about your, your day this side here is a fully ready battle rifle uh, this one is Set up with a sling and everything, good to go. Lots of ammo and mags. So you pull this gun out of there. And this is the Caltech SU-16. So another folding gun by Caltech. As you can see, you just take it out and close.
close the action. On this side, there's a hole for a pin. Put that in. I just have it tied here on the side. Have my mag on the back. And you're ready to rock. On this side, I've got another 30 round P mag. Uh, this one is secured in a mag pouch. And then underneath the rifle, there are two 20 round small mags that fit into the stock of the gun. And they're just held in there with friction. Put them in like that, not going anywhere. Take this out and be able to shoot it. Right side charging on this one. Uh, again, what I like about this gun uh, is it's a piston gun. So it's lightweight. It's not front heavy like most piston guns, but it is a piston action, meaning that my um, bolts can stay cleaner and also cooler running on piston driven uh, off the gas. And then uh, one of the kind of gimmicky features that Caltech likes to do is this one has a built in bipod in the handguard. You pull it like so. Pull that out, I'll be able to set up. And really take a uh, accurate shot, have the bipod built in, can move around on it forward. Uh, can't load it too much, but uh, you definitely can easily position yourself. So it's just a nice feature that they've conveniently put in there for you. Close it up, just squeeze the handguard back together and that's that. It's got a rear sight here, uh, front sight, good sight radius uh, for some accuracy. These guns aren't horribly accurate, but um, not a bolt gun, but I think it does as well as an AK, um, almost as well as a, as a basic AR. Um, but for shooting 5.56, having a lightweight, probably five pound gun, um, and then this loadout is 100 rounds of 5.56, 30, 30, 20, 20. Um, out of your backpack, very light. Take it, put it back, you just pull the pin out and the action will fold. And this is the size that you'll be putting in your backpack. Nice compact section put in the backpack and you have a full length rifle now obviously you can get a bullpup rifle and put that in your backpack um, it probably be about the same length as this receiver plus barrel um, but this is where this this rifle um, has a unique advantage in that it's $450 what I paid for it I think they go for $650 nowadays but uh, still, at that price, uh, you have a full, full-size barrel, a piston-driven 5.56 gun for 500 bucks. I don't think you'll get that in an AR anytime soon. And I would also tell you this is uh, a half as heavy as an AR, very light. Another basic backpack. It's like uh, sports swings or big five, typical SOG, all around use backpack. It's got another small gun in here that we can use. Shit hits the fan, plugging out. This is a Fight Light SCR um, AR pistol. 5.56, five, I've got my uh, sling retention here, sling management, pull that off, put this on. And uh, this is AR pistol, uh, where the action and sp the recoil spring and buffer is built into the handle. So uh, to get this kind of bird's handle, like the shotguns, but this is 5.56 pistol, um, very handy, light, 
concealable, as you can see. Uh, pull this out, be able to put some shots out, get my uh, backup sights up. And so on this one, um, found this several different ways to use it. Obviously you can put it at chest level, turn on the laser and just do some quick short action firing. But for anything where you actually wanna use these sights, it's very difficult with this handle. Um, it wasn't, I think it, this is definitely a gimmicky gun. This was not intended to be um, an accurate shooter by any means. It's got a seven and a half inch barrel, um, but it is very compact and small. And so for those people that would just love to have an AR handy on them, uh, maybe out in the woods for coyotes or something. Uh, this is about as light and small as a package as you can get for AR. And what I found is as long as you use a, uh, a good sling on here, put my hand through the sling, grab the grip. Now my wrist is locked into this sling and I can bring it up to face level and be able to shoot. I'm pulling against my neck and bracing against my, my wrist and I'm able to shoot this gun, handle the recoil, get back on sight. But right now I'm looking down the sights and I can reach that trigger and it's gonna move a little bit. Good uh, angles for grip on the front. Good uh, purchase on this front hand, holding it steady, pushing forward. This back hand, just grab the grip naturally. And when I put my trigger in there, with kind of locked in. Be able to do work. In your backpack, carry some mags, put my plate carrier in there, have a full 30 round mag. Same thing, you can hold on to the mag if you want. I like the front grip, brace it up, be able to do some shooting. Keep your hand in here while you're waiting. North and south, come up, probably four pounds here. And if not the uh, the, the ballistics themselves, the gigantic blast of this 5.56 five, coming out of five inches um, is going to put a small hole, but very loudly with a lot of flash, um, definitely will deter any bad guy who might be coming at you. Next thing I'm gonna show you a different type of bug out gun. This system I have set up is not in a bag or anything, and it is a full length rifle. Um, many of you know it. This is a Mosin Nagant. Uh, this particular rifle has been sporterized. Um, they added a different front sight post to the front, and they added a kind of shaved down stock with somewhat of a pistol grip section here at the bottom. Um, and overall, the, the stock is a, a little bit thinner um, than a regular Mosin stock. I did put this inside a Mosin stock, but with the the front sight being changed, it didn't look like a Mosin, so no point in that. Uh, but also, um, it has like a different front sight system. This is a rare gun. Um, you would think they were crazy for having um, made this into a sporter rifle, but this is actually a Remington um, made in the US and then exported. So they were, they were short on making Mosins and they wanted some help. They contracted with an American company to produce Mosins. I believe. And so uh, we have a different rear sight block on this uh, weapon. Um, this barrel for a Mosin Nagant is absolutely shiny chrome. Um, it doesn't look like it's been fired much at all. So they, when they re-arsenal this or uh, whoever made this one, um, put a fantastic barrel on it. Um, so this rifle shoots and loads with a um, stripper clip. It's very dependable action and this rifle cost me uh, just over $100. So 
uh, $400. I have a grab and go type rifle. I would not mind having this in my truck, underneath the seat in my truck, locked up in the truck toolbox. Um, but with this setup, you are basically armed and ready to go. This caliber can handle big game. You can hunt deer with it. You can take down uh, predators. This is a 7.62 by 54R. And so um, here's that, that round. And uh, like I said, I got, you know, one, two, three, four, five rounds that holds at a time. Fill up that mag. We've got extra mags here or extra clips. Uh, this is why they call magazines clips, is these stripper clips. Push it in, load up, five rounds. So I've got a total of five here, four more stripper clips, so that's 20. And then each of these pouches holds another three stripper clips. So right there is 55 rounds of ammo of 7.62 by 54R. Not a bad start to have to run off and do some, any really kind of work or adventure. Um, you'd be good to go with that much ammo for a little while. All right, so I got that basic USGI army style bipod strapped to the rifle. So I'm out in the field and I'm about to take out this deer. Pull this off, pull out my bipod, set on the barrel, and I am ready to fire. All right, I forgot there's a fourth scenario, which is natural disasters. We are looking at a flood, a levee's about to break. We might have a hurricane or tidal wave of zombies, bodies falling out of the sky. Uh, we could have several of these scenarios and crises happening at the same time. I know I didn't go into detail about the contents of the bug out bags. There are a lot of better videos out there on YouTube on what to take with you in your bug out bag. I just wanted to show you some of these weapons. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Got a lot of other videos coming. Lots of new guns. Thanks for watching. Danger close.